My name is George William Budd. I'm better known as Billy Budd. I'm going to give you a brief history of my family that resided in Coppin Street Deal and were in the past well-known boatmen and great characters on Deal Beach. I've included many old pictures. The quality is poor in some of them owing to their age. Now retired after many years at sea and being involved in one dramatic rescue, I've written a short history of my family. I hope you enjoy watching. I was born on the 21st of March 1954 at number 16 Coppin Street and I am now the last surviving member of the Budd family that still resides in Coppin Street in the old part of Deal. Most of my family lived in or around Coppin Street. My grandfather, George William Budd, who I was named after, was born on the 24th of the 4th, 1889, the youngest of four brothers. William Budd, Herbert Budd and John Budd. John was also known as Jack Budd. William, Herbert and Jack never married and lived at number 14A Coppin Street. My grandfather George married Emily Frances Denton in 1912 and they lived at number 127 Beach Street on the top corner of Coppin Street opposite the Three Compasses Inn. They had three children, George, Marion and John who was my father. With George being the eldest and John my father the youngest, they moved sometime in the late 1940s to number 16 Coppin Street. The four brothers were all boatmen. They had their beach plots at the top of Broad Street opposite where the roundabout now stands. In recollection they had three motorboats on the beach, the Britannic, the Britannia and the Britain, along with several small punts. The Britannic was sadly lost at Dunkirk. The story is covered in Deal's History Part 10. The Britannia was sold in the late 1940s to a gentleman from London. I always remember my dad telling me that when he went with his father in the Britannia and delivered her for the new owner, they left Deal Beach and steamed up to London where the gentleman took command of her. This was quite an adventure for my father as a young boy and no mean trip for a beach boat. The Briton was a four-cell mizzen punt of 16 foot which had a Kelvin Ricardo four horsepower petrol paraffin engine installed in her in her later years. She survived well into the 1960s. I have made many trips in the Britain during my younger years. Herring fishing, netting, long lining and all sorts of other fishing trips. Falling into a poor state of repair, she was eventually broken up in 1967 and burned on the beach. My Uncle George married May Jewson in 1935 and they lived at number 9 Coppin Street. They had a family of four daughters, Shirley, Sheila, Catherine and Phyllis. Though Uncle George was never a boatman, he gained a good education at Sir Roger Manwood's school in Sandwich and served an apprenticeship as a bricklayer, from which he was given employment at Deal Castle and worked as a permanent maintenance man he was also a very keen bait digger and spent many hours in Sandwich Bay digging yellowtails which he sold to the visiting anglers. This supplemented his income. My father John Budd carried on the family tradition working as a boatman and he worked on the beach from an early age spending a great deal of time with Tommy Upton, another well-known character that could always be seen at the on the beach on his plots at the top of Brewer Street. 
My father married Gertrude May Boswell in 1951. They had three sons, John, myself and Derek. We all lived at number 16 Coppin Street with our grandfather. It was when we all came along that he started working with his father, running the Princess Elizabeth, a fast, sleek 28-footer built by Bob Abel at the bottom of Coppin Street in what was then called Deal Marine Craft. This vessel was funded with a compensation payment from the government for the replacement of the Britannic, which was lost at Dunkirk in June 1940. My dad skippered her for some years, taking her angling parties, and also did various boating trips for visitors out and around the Downs and out to the Goodwin Sands. Like his father, he continued the family tradition of bait digging, shrimping, long line fishing for cod, and potting for whelks and lobsters. The extra income made in the raising of his family, which wasn't easy just after the war. He continued working hard and all the hours under the sun until December 1965 when his father died. A young boatman called Roy Hukins then took over as skipper of the Princess Elizabeth and my father took over the shore side of the business. The 1960s and 70s was a very prolific period in the angling sector of deal boats. Hundreds of anglers used to come to deal for the excellent fishing Nobody was ever disappointed with their catch and the anglers used to return home with good bags of fish, days now long gone since. I have some very fond memories of my grandfather George. He was an old style boatman and a good seaman. He used to tell me many stories about his adventures which happened in his early life and some really good stories of being a boatman operating from the beach and deal. George went to sea on sailing vessels as a young man, gaining his chief mate certificate, a hard life in the old days. He was involved in the rescue of survivors of HMS Niger, which was torpedoed and sank just one mile east of Deal Pier on the 11th of November 1914. For his part in the rescue, in which he used one of his own boats, he was awarded a medal from the Mayor of Deal. I donated this medal to the local Maritime and History Museum in St George's Road, Deal, where it is now proudly on display. As of myself and my brothers, John the eldest of my brothers spent many hours at Bob Abel's boat building workshop at the bottom of our street and was very interested in boat building. On leaving school he became a carpenter and in later years being very skilled in boat repairs. He was always in demand to do repairs to the wooden clinker built boats on the beach. John eventually purchased two motor boats, the four brothers from Terry Harris and the Maisie Ann from Joey Smith. He also had a couple of 14 foot paddle punts. Now, like me, old age has taken over and he has taken in his last years in retirement. My younger brother Derek was always on the beach as a child and would certainly have been a good boatman but fate took its hand and he was sadly killed in a road accident on the Jubilee Way just after it first opened when he was 19. He was on his motorbike when a foreign car decided to make a U-turn in front of him. The collision was fatal. Derek was a sad loss to our family and he has never been forgotten. As of myself, it was when I was three years old that I contracted polio and spent much of my early years in and out of hospital. This caused me to lose the use of my right leg and I had to wear a caliper until I was 10. But this didn't deter me from doing anything and I was always on the beach and helping out with the boats and going afloat at every opportunity. I left school in 1969, age 15 and went to work on the beach full time. I gained my boatman's licence at the age of 16 by lying about my age. You had to be 18 to get a licence then. I started working for Percy Lucker, a skipper in the Silver Harvester, and was mentored by Johnny Revel, known as Nutty Revel as he was called. These were 
happy days which carry some really fond memories. Later I worked with the Evans family, netting for herrings and sprats and long line fishing in the winter months, then returning to angling parties during the summer months. I didn't actually like angling parties and preferred commercial fishing, but needs must when a living has to be made. I skipped with the Lady Hague for a few months, which was owned like many of the boats on the beach during the 1960s and 70s by a London businessman, but he eventually sold the boat as he said it wasn't returning his investment as quickly as he wanted. From here I went on skippering the, prin Le the Princess Elizabeth for my dad, as Roy Eukins had taken a job and started work at Betsanger Colliery. During the summer of 1975, my good friend and next door neighbour Terry Harris, who was at the time working for the London and Rochester Trading Company on one of their ships. It was on one occasion when Terry was home on leave and I was having a drink with him in the local pub that he suggested that I should also try to get a job with this shipping company. As times were getting a bit hard on the beach, I considered this approach and eventually signed up with the shipping company. I joined my first ship, the motor vessel Ignition, as a deckhand. It was something I didn't really want to do and I only intended working at this until I'd saved enough money to buy my own boat. But I steadily worked my way through the ranks and with much studying, I eventually passed a grade for my mate certificate. I worked as chief mate for three years then qualified for my master's certificate, an achievement of which I was immensely proud as I have no GCSEs or O-levels from my school days. I took a command of one of their coasters straight away and never looked back. I carried on working as a ship's captain on various ships ranging from small coasters and one container ship and medium-sized general cargo ships. These were trading from the Black Sea, Mediterranean Sea, to the Baltic and all European ports. On one sad occasion I was loading a cargo in the port of Zbrugge when the ferry Herald of Free Enterprise capsized just outside the harbour. Seeing the disaster, I gave the orders to quickly let go of the shorelines and manoeuvred my ship, the motor vessel River Tamar, alongside the ferry my crew boarded the ferry and we managed to rescue 18 survivors, including one three-month-old baby. For this action, I was awarded a special medal award for outstanding seamanship by the Shipwreck Mariners, Fishermen's and Mariners Society, and a mention in the 1988 New Year's Honours. The crew also received a medal from the P&O Shipping Company. I carried on working as a ship's captain until the age of 62 when I decided to call it a day and enjoy some well-earned retirement with my wife of 33 years, Denise. I have lived in Coppin Street for all of my life in keeping with the family tradition, being the last deal-born and bred seaman residing in Coppin Street. Now like many others, time is taking its toll. Some memories of the past have been recorded for generations to come so that when I pass the bar people will know some of the history of Coppin Street and the Deal Boatman from the Bud family. Thank you for listening to my stories. I hope you enjoyed the brief history of part of the Bud family. Billy Bud 2020